dear students today we will discuss about the hydroformylation reaction hydroformylation reaction is a uh, homogeneous catalytic carboxylation process okay so this is a kind of carboxyl uh, carboxylation process in which carbonyl and hydrogen they add to the olefinic compound and then they can form uh, that uh, aldehyde uh, kind of compounds okay so uh, this is also known as oxo process this hydroformylation reaction hydroformylation is a homogeneous catalytic process it is also known as oxo process and it is useful in the synthesis of aldehydes from alkenes and sometimes these uh, produced the synthesized aldehydes they can further hydrogenated to form alcohols so this can be helpful this process is only for the preparation of aldehydes and this aldehyde can be used for the preparation of hydrogenated uh, can be hydrogenated uh, to alcohol so uh, alcohol production can al also be done through these synthesized aldehydes and in the formulation actually what happens addition of cho group why it is called as hydroformylation reaction because addition of this h hydro group and formyl group okay cho group to the c double bond c bond so this is olefin if if uh, this there is addition of formyl and hydro group in the olefinic double bond then it is known as hydroformylation reaction hydroformylation okay i think you can understand hydroformylation means addition of hydrogen and formyl group to the uh, olefinic compounds so now you can see that this uh, olefinic compound it can react with hydrogen and this uh, carbonyl in presence of a catalyst then it can form two kind of isomers one is uh, this linear type of isomer that is uh, primary uh, it can be it can, is denoted by primary type of uh, aldehyde and then this is the branched type of aldehyde so two type of uh, products can be formed Uh, in ratio four is to one, so linear is in higher amount while the branched one is in lower amount. Okay, so these aldehydes, this is the linear aldehyde that is produced during hydroformylation reaction, and this is the branched uh, aldehyde produced during the hydroformylation reaction. The ratio of these two is almost uh, almost about four is to one. So in the presence of other catalyst catalytic hydrogenation can be done and this group can be oxidized to uh, hydrogenated to the uh, it is uh, to the alcohols so this group is hydrogenated to alcoholic group so these aldehydes they are useful in preparation of alcohols also generally uh, in hydroformylation temperature uh, is generally Uh, set to 42 to 100 degree centigrade and pressure uh, requirement is uh, uh, from 10 to 100 atm atmospheric pressure and this process is discovered by otto roil lon in 1938 and the catalysts that are used uh, for this uh, hydroformylation they are cobalt based catalyst and rhodium based catalyst so it may be co2 co8 rh h co pph3 whole thrice with phosphine ligand and then rh4 co12 so these three may be the catalyst which can uh, which can uh, catalyze the hydroformylation or oxo process in this uh, oxo process you can see that hydrogen from this hydrogen molecule one hydrogen is added to this double bond portion okay so you can see this is the hydrogen one at here and one hydrogen will bond to the carbon of this carbonyl okay in each case you can see one directly added to the double bond and the other will bond to the co group and then it will form the cho group okay 
Now, this is the catalytic cycle of hydroformylation or oxo process. So, as uh, I uh, already told you that in homogeneous catalysis, there are uh, the reactions they uh, occur via catalytic cycles. So, likewise, this hydroformylation or oxo process, it also uh, occur via a cyclic process. So, this is the catalytic cyclic process of hydroformylation. Now, you can see this is the catalyst that is of cobalt. This, this is CO2CO8. So, this is not an active catalyst. When this, this catalyst, it reacts with H2. Through binuclear oxidative addition, it will convert into HCOCO4. The, the uh, circled, uh, this element is cobalt while this is carbonyl. This is carbonyl, this is cobalt. Okay. So, when this uh, catalyst, it act, uh, react with this H2 through bionuclear oxidation, oxidative addition, it will form monohydride cobalt carbonate. One hydrogen is added to it. Okay. So, it becomes HCOCO4. Now, this HCOCO4, it, it can, it is also not an active catalyst, but from this one CO will dissociate. So, from this compound one CO will dissociate and this will be the active catalyst which is HCOCO3. So, this is the active catalyst for this hydroformylation or oxo process. Okay. This is the active catalyst HCOCO3. Now, you can see that this is an 18 electron species and after dissociation of this carbonyl, it becomes 16 electron species. Now, this is a 16 electron species. So, it has one vacant site. So, this cobalt center will have one vacant site and at that vacant site, this olefin can easily coordinate. Now, in this compound, this olefin will, uh, will uh, add. Okay. So, this is olefinic coordination. Now, this olefin will coordinate to this cobalt. So, this is HCOCO3 and it has one vacant site. To, so, this uh, olefin will bound to this cobalt center. Now, again, it become 18 electron system. Now, it has carbonyl and it has uh, it has H and it has this uh, moiety. So, now migratory insertion will take place. So, beta migratory insertion will occur and this hydrogen will go to this beta position and thus formation of this kind of compound will take place. And again, there is 1, 2, 3, 4 coordination here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 coordination. So, here 18 electron system. Now, it again becomes 16 electron system. And when it becomes 16 electron system, there is again a vacant site. To that vacant site, one carbonyl is added. That carbonyl was uh, dissociated here. Now, it is added to this molecule and again it becomes 18 electron system. So, now there are 4 carbonyls. And one this uh, olefinic, uh, this uh, reduced olefinic group. Okay. Then again, it has carbonyl and it has this alkyl group. So again, migratory insertion will take place, and it is now it is alpha migratory insertion. So this carbonyl group will now migrate to the alpha position of this group. So this is the alpha position. So this will uh, uh, insert at this position is uh, alpha, uh, to the alpha carbon of this group. So, uh, it will insert here. Now, it again becomes 16 electron system. Now, again, the coordination number is 4. So, it becomes 16 electron system. Now, it has vacant site again. So, in this vacant site, this hydrogen can oxidatively add. So, here, the oxidative addition of hydrogen will again takes place and formation of dihydride complex will occur. You can see that there are two hydride uh, they are at cis position to each other. So, this complex is a dihydride complex and 
this again it becomes 18 electron system. After oxidative addition, now reductive elimination will take place. This is a kind of binuclear reductive elimination. So this H and this group, they will reductively eliminate and form HCOME. So this kind of a product they generate and this is the remaining part COHCOCO3 which is the active catalyst. So again this 18 electron species will convert into 18 electron species. So in this way you can see that this catal in this catalytic cycle uh, this uh, catalyst will regenerate. Okay. The catalyst will regenerate and this is the active catalyst which uh, regenerated after reductive elimination. This is the termination step and this product will be formed. So this cycle will generate uh, such kind of aldehydes from these olefins. So what is the catalyst? Catalyst was CO2CO8 but the active catalyst was HCOCO3 which is a 16 electron species and it is oxidatively unsaturated species. So oh, this can easily add the olefin then after addition of olefin a beta migratory insertion will take place and then addition of CO then again alpha migratory insertion takes place and after this oxidative addition of H2 molecule and uh, when oxidative addition occur after this the final product will be formed by the reductive elimination that is by nuclear type and again the uh, the catalyst will regenerate and the product will be formed. So this is the hydroformylation uh, cycle uh, homogeneous catalytic cycle. Now we will discuss about the selectivity of hydroformylation or oxoplosis. So how uh, the uh, hydroformylation is selective towards the product. So uh, the selectivity depends upon the steric hindrance in the catalyst. So oh, there, these are several points which will uh, going to clarify about the selectivity of the hydroformylation catalyst. So, primary aldehyde is more valuable as compared to secondary aldehyde. Actually, primary means this is the linear aldehyde. So, linear aldehydes, they are more valuable as compared to the uh, branched aldehydes. So, we require uh, the uh, linear aldehydes. So, for a production of linear aldehyde, what has to be done in the catalyst? So, what should be the preferences so that we will get the more valuable product that is linear aldehydes. So, addition of phosphines in the catalyst favors formation of primary or uh, this uh, linear aldehyde. So, if we uh, if we add or substitute the ligands of the catalyst with the uh, this bulkier phosphine ligand then formation of a primary aldehyde will be accelerated okay so the ratio that goes to 8 is to 1 from 4 is to 1 that is that is linear if linear uh, is 8 then the uh, branched will be 1 so uh, by the addition of uh, this phosphine ligands in the catalyst, they can accelerate the formation of linear aldehydes that are very valuable. Then atmospheric pressure required for such kind of phosphines, uh, this becomes also reduced that is from 5 to 10 atmospheric pressure that was previously very high. So when we use this kind of uh, catalyst, then the pressure will reduced okay now uh, this is one of the catalyst r h h c o p s p p s 3 whole tri so in this uh, catalyst there is phosphine ligand so this is very reactive very active catalyst at one atmospheric pressure and 25 degree centigrade and can synthesize primary aldehyde or linear aldehyde. So, in this kind of catalyst there is phosphine bulky ligand. So, it will uh, uh, shifts the ratio of primary and secondary aldehyde to 
ट्वेंटी इज टू वन फ्रॉम फोर इज टू वन सो यू कैन सी दैट दिस इज वेरी हेल्पफुल इन प्रोड्यूसिंग द प्राइमरी टाइप ऑफ हेल्दी एल डी हाइट्स और लीनियर टाइप ऑफ एल डी हाइट्स ना इफ वी सी द सेलेक्टिविटी ऑफ दिस काइंड ऑफ कैटालिस्ट देन वी विल सी दैट ऑल दो दिस इज अ वेरी एक्टिव कैटालिस्ट बट it has poor selectivity it has poor selectivity because of these ligands so it, it does not have the bulkier ligands so its selectivity is very poor and uh, uh, the primary uh, aldehyde uh, and or secondary aldehyde they may uh, be in the same ratio so it has not a good selectivity okay during now during the oxo process pph3 is added to the reaction mixture if we are doing uh, this uh, hydroformylation or oxo process then in the reaction mixture we generally add pph3 to prevent the formation of h r h c o 4 because again this is not a very active species this is not a selective species that can only uh, helpful in the formation of primary aldehyde so we use this pps3 because sometimes if pps3 is there so it dissociate during the catalytic cycle so to maintain its selectivity we have to add some amount of phosphine in the reaction mixture now these are two different ways to generate branched aldehyde or straight chain or linear aldehyde so how we get the two kind of uh, aldehydes during hydroformylation so if we see uh, this addition of this olefin to this active catalyst then there may be two chances the first case is this and the second case that is shown by is green that may be this okay so in the first case this h may migratory insert here and such kind of product may be formed and this product is branched type aldehyde and in this case this h can goes to this carbon and thus linear kind of straight chain kind of aldehyde will be prepared so how this obtained so this is obtained through markovnikov's rule according to which hydrogen adds to that carbon which has more number of hydrogen so this hydrogen will add to here and through markovnikov rule this kind of product will be obtained and through antic markovnikov rule the hydrogen can bind to that position where the uh, it has lesser number of hydrogen so this should be the product of uh, the hydroformylation that is through anti markovnikov's addition and a straight chain polymer uh, aldehyde will obtained so when this kind of uh, anti markovnikov addition will takes place then a linear kind of aldehyde will be produced so generally this will produced and in which kind of compounds how this can be produced uh, uh, we are discussing uh, that are the factors that affect the formation of uh, or selectivity of the catalyst towards the production of primary aldehyde or linear aldehyde now you can see that steric hindrance generally not favors markovnikov's addition steric hindrance why due to the presence of bulky phosphine ligand at the metal center they do, don't favor markovnikov's addition so the reactions because steric hindrance will uh, destabilize the product of this kind uh, so the product stabilize through the bulkier ligands that will be the linear or straight chain aldehyde so the addition of hydrogen will takes place through anti markovnikov's rule presence of bulky group on the catalyst favors anti markovnikov's addition thus favors the formation of linear aldehyde so because there is no chances of bulkiness due to branched here the chances of crowding or bulkiness or steric hindrance is there so the hydrogen addition in the olefin is according to the anti markovnikov rule 
due to steric hindrance so if there is uh, heavy bulkier ligands like phosphines then uh, anti marconi corps addition will take place so linear aldehyde will be formed so if in case of steric hindrance only linear aldehyde will be formed if we see the other factors the first factor we have studies was the selectivity selectivity of the uh, uh, for the product if a steric hindrance was there then uh, the primary aldehyde will be formed that is linear kind of uh, aldehyde now uh, the second is electronic effect so electron rich hydride complex that is hco co3 it behaves as less proton like okay hence it favors anti marconi corps addition and thus favors linear product so how the uh, Uh, the the hydroformylation it favors the linear product in case of uh, this cobalt based catalyst because there is no steric hindrance in the ligands uh, due to the ligands uh, the the ligands are very simple but in this case also the primary or linear kind of aldehydes form why this is why because this hydride complex behaves less proton like so it cannot easily donate the proton uh, the hydrogen in the form of proton as in case of marconi corps rule so the addition occur via anti marconi corps rule therefore linear product will be going to form now the third factor that affects the selectivity or the formation of a polymer that is branched or linear that also depends upon the kind of substrate so if the substrate is styrene in case of styrene it it it, uh, provi it promotes the formation of branched polymer as compared to the linear polymers while the aliphatic olefins they promotes the formation of linear polymer as compared to the branched polymers actually in case of styrene the stability of intermediate is higher due to the resonance of negative charge in the phenyl ring so negative charge in the phenyl ring will be stabilized through the resonance hence it will encourage the formation of branched polymer okay so it will favors the formation of branched polymer as compared to the linear polymer the the negative charge on the phenyl ring will be stabilized through, through the resonance so this will favors the branched polymer as compared to the linear polymer while the aliphatic olefins they promotes or the favor formation of linear polymer as compared to the branched polymer now this hydroformylation is also helpful in the synthesis of asymmetric type of compounds asymmetric type of compounds means uh it can used in the asymmetric synthesis so it is known as asymmetric hydroformylation so drugs like uh, this is a drug that is dexy uh, brufofen so this drug is used as anti inflammatory drug and which has the chiral center so it is a specific type of stereoisomer so uh, this hydroformylation can also helpful in the synthesis of Uh, asymmetric hydroformylation okay so now if we take the styrene styrene and the uh, the ligand that is of rhodium and it also has a chiral center at 50 atm and in presence of carbon monoxide and h2 it will form two uh, this isomer uh, this isomer because styrene forms i have already told you that styrene favors the formation of branched kind of Uh, aldehyde while uh, this linear aldehyde will be uh, produced only very in the very less amount so uh, this uh, isomer is about 95% and this is stereo isomer so this styrene is helpful in synthesizing the uh, chiral compounds that are stereo specific and uh, generally the uh, the uh, Uh, the enantiomers or the stereoisomers they are useful in uh, the uh, medicinal uh, chemistry or medicinal industry so these can be used as the drugs so this is a uh, drug which is synthesized 
by asymmetric hydroformylation and this is the drug that is having the anti-inflammatory activity. The uh, catalytic hydroformylation, it also uses the catalyst like this rhodium catalyst that is HRHCOPPH3 whole thrice. So, it, uh, the catalyst is having the bulky phosphine ligands. So, these bul bulky phosphine ligands, they can uh, easily dissociate. So, this is a 18 electron species. Now, from this uh, catalyst, this PPH3 can easily dissociate and form this uh, kind of active catalyst in which you can see that RH and one uh, H is attached to this R, this is monohydride type complex and two phosphine ligands are there and this is a 16 electron species. Now this is a 16 electron species and active catalyst so now it can easily add the olefin to this metal center and after addition of this olefin to the metal center it again becomes 18 electron system and then 18 electron system it, uh, it has, it complex has H and this uh, olefinic uh, compound. So, uh, here the beta migratory insertion will take place. Beta migratory insertion will take place. So, uh, now this will add uh, in this uh, here and now we will get such kind of complex. It is again a 16 electron species. Now, addition of carbonyl will take place. So, this cycle is uh, almost the same as that of CO2, CO8. Okay, but we are using uh, this catalyst here in spite of CO2, CO8. The cycle has the same steps as in case of the CO2, CO8 catalyzed reaction. Now the CO will add and after addition of CO carbonyl, then it becomes 18 electron species and it has CO and this group. So again, uh, the CO will migrate to the alpha position and then it is known as alpha migratory insertion and this kind of compound will form uh, that is acyl complex and it is again a 16 electron system then H2 will oxidatively add to form again a 18 electron system and after oxidative addition the last step of the cycle is reductive elimination where this H and this group will dissociate and form the product that is aldehyde linear aldehyde and this is the remaining catalyst that will be regenerated in this step. Now we can conclude the hydroformylation reaction in which uh, the olefin, carbonyl and hydrogen they react in the presence of catalyst uh, that catalyst may be based on cobalt or rhodium and then formation of aldehyde. Generally, the aldehyde forms in the higher amount that is the major product is the linear one and linear one is very valuable kind of uh, aldehyde. Okay, So, how we uh, get the linear kind of uh, that uh, linear aldehyde in higher amount uh, that are the three factors which have to uh, taken in the mind during the formation of uh, during the oxo process. So, that are steric hindrance and uh, then uh, other point is electronic effect and third is substrate. So, if uh, there is a steric hindrance in the uh, catalyst, then the formation of uh, that linear polymer will be there uh, that increases from 4 is to 1 ratio uh, to the uh, 20 is to 1 ratio for linear versus branched product. Then uh, uh, the, the effectors that has to be undertaken in the, into consideration is electronic effect. So, electronic effect uh, works on uh, the catalysts like HCOCO3 that is active catalyst. So, in which uh, it behaves less proton like. So, it, it uh, favors anti Markovnikov addition that generates the linear polymer and the third one is the substrate it depends upon the substrate Sub if the substrate is styrene type then the branched polymer will be favored uh, the addition will take place via Markovnikov rule and this hydroformylation is also useful in the synthesis of uh, stereoisomers in the synthesis of several drugs so it is also uh, called as asymmetric hydroformylation and uh, this Hydroformylation occurs through a catalytic cycle because it is homogeneous catalyst, uh, catalytic uh, based uh, reaction. So, this hydroformylation 
occurs via catalytic cycle and this catalytic cycle has several steps so number one step is after formation of active catalyst the number one step is uh, that olefinic coordination then beta migratory insertion then addition of carbonyl then alpha migratory insertion then oxidative addition of hydrogen and then reductive elimination and formation of product so these are the steps of hydroformylation or oxo process either the catalyst may be cobalt based or may be rhodium based the catalytic cycle will remain the same so this is all about hydroformylation reaction which is a kind of homogeneous catalytic reaction so thank you very much